Hello and welcome to Babbles Travelling Yarns, the 100th episode. One hundred. That is one hundred times I've sat down in front of this camera and put up some random mind chats. How? That's mad. So it's been three years since, actually three and a half years since my first podcast. I was looking back over while putting together that little clip and it's just fascinating how I've evolved as a podcaster, as a person, as a knitter, as a crafter. I can, I could see like all the steps in my journey. It was fascinating. That's why I love podcasting. It's a record for myself of my own creative journey, <laughs> which is so uh, ugh, gross to say. Ugh. My own creative journey. It's important to look back on these times and realize how I've grown. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take all that back. No, but seriously, thank you so much for being here. I was watching my milestones I was as I was coming through. I think around 40, episode 40, I hit 2,000 and then 4,000 and then suddenly it just escalated and now we're at 12,800 subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, to celebrate this little milestone, a huge milestone, in my podcast, I want to offer a couple of prizes. So I've got a couple of prizes here, yarn prizes. Some of them are my own hand dyed yarns, which can't be found anywhere at the moment because I'm, well, I think they can be found at the Irish Fibre Crafters, that's about it. So um, this is my DK weight yarn and it is in the Higgledy colorway. So there's some, the light's kind of blowing it out now a little bit, but you've got some deep purples, reds, blues, yellows, just all of the all of the colors and this is a DK weight skein so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling prizes from the comments down below so in order for me to give them to you you've got to keep an eye out for the next podcast so make sure you're prescribed you prescribed make sure you're subscribed and make sure if you comment down below you are in to win a prize you've got to watch the next one <laughs> to find out if you want it and then you've got to contact me with your details so this is a sock weight skein this is merino sock in fawn colorway and I just love this one it's a bit of a it's a rustic skein of kind of deep burgundies fawn colors some greens and some blue speckled in there with this splash of purple I absolutely love this colorway it's just a speckly goodness, speckly goodness. So one of these. I've also got a couple of skeins that people have gifted me through the years so that I'm going to be putting up. Hooking Marvelous Yarns has given me Mermaid Dreams and I just love this. I love this so much. It is absolutely beautiful. So that's Mermaid Dreams by hookingmarvelous.co.uk. Hook, they're an UK based yarn and um, oh, I'm loving all the UK based yarn at the moment because I'm trying to buy it all before the dreaded B word so we don't know what's going to happen so um, I also have a few special special items which I might just pull down and just start giving away oh dear do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to go over to the back here oh exciting time so this is a stunning oh, stunning skein from Open Sky Yarns, Warm Breeze. 
in the, it's in the After the Rain um, colorway and it's in Smooth Sock, Cirrus Smooth Sock and it's hand dyed in South Africa. Oh my God. Um, so Open Sky Yarns got .co .za. I don't know if you can see that, but Open Sky Yarns and it's just stunning. I love this colorway. It's got beautiful, it's a base, it's like a, it's on a base of white, but then there's overtones of gray and blues and cerise there, and um, like a cyan blue there. Oh, stunning. It's kind of like Irish skies. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I also wanted to give away this little soap set that I got from Ullen. This is um, a soap, it's a, it's a yarn, um, it's a garment soap, so it's from Olin.ie. Smells like lavender. Um, they suggest using a basin or sink, sink filled with lukewarm water to create gentle suds. Lather your hand and then place the garment into the water, ensuring thoroughly soaked. So that's one of the soaps that is going to be included in the prizes. What else? Now these are all my prizes for the, um, for the spin and make along if you're not in if you're there's a bag available and all the sorts of different stuff what might i have a little oh i know i know i know i know i know where did i put up where did i put them on i've got a couple of badges to give away from oh here they are from mars from the hey brownberry podcast so i've got some of her socks on board which and, and then I've got a sweater on board and I think she's just released a yarn on board so socks on board and sweater on board so I have a couple of these amazing pins they're double backed hard heavy duty workmanship pins I love it workwomanship pins <laughs> I've got some of those to go in I've got some stitch markers I've got this whole tray of stitch markers <laughs> not all of them are going in just some, just some. I want to give away this beautiful set of Banded Fibre Co. So you've got an alpaca, a spinning wheel, a scissors, some yarn stitch markers. That's Banded Fibre Company. And they are in on Instagram as Banded Fibre Co. And they've got www.banditfibreco.com as well. So, oh, look at that spinning wheel. A friend of mine has those in earrings and I want them. I could just buy two of those and just use the earrings, but no, nope, that's part of the giveaway. What else have I got here? Mm, pretty things, pretty things. Oh, see all of these are too, uh, they're, they're a bit special because everyone's given them to me. So that's, that's my stitch markers that I'm going to give away. I also, hmm, I, can you tell I haven't thought about this? Um, what I would like to do is give away a book as well, I think. Mm. I'm going to give away this book called Woven Style for the Rigid Head Looms. For This is for the weavers in this world. So I'm going to look through and see. And if there's any particular weavers out there, you'd like, if you want to comment down below and say you'd like to get this book and I'll randomly generate and if someone picks that that's great so there's uh, beyond go beyond the rectangle adding knitting sewing or crochet so this is one of the giveaways yay all right and you know what I might just randomly throw in more stuff because 100 is huge giant 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 so I'm so happy about it and uh, now that's a lot of packaging that I've got to do oh big sigh what are you gonna do I actually I'm I'm not I'm no good at giveaways no good at giveaways so you have to contact me you have to be watching this podcast and you have to be watching the next one to find out if you win uh, I'm not going to be chasing up after anyone because I don't have time <laughs> So if nobody contacts me, if nobody gets back to me and the, the prize I've assigned doesn't, it goes uncollected, it goes into the next giveaway. I don't pull in other names. I, uh, that's, that's the rule I've set myself. That's my boundary. So it's a one-off shot, guys. You have to be paying attention. So pay attention, watch next time and see if you've got a win. See if you've won something.
and uh, you can comment on anything anything in particular I was wondering if if anybody had a favorite podcast that you can remember or a favorite antic that I got up to in the last three and a half years uh, that'd be fascinating to find out um, I was looking back and it's a hundred over three and a half years so that's little little under two like if I was doing a podcast a week it'd be two years of content but spread over three and a half that's okay I had gaps here and there and I was doing two weeks and I was traveling a lot and yeah that's okay that's pretty good I'm not gonna beat myself up oh I just want to say this is um a beautiful mug by Remembrances Pottery and she made these um for me I have two of them uh Babbles Yarns Global Inspirations and uh, she's also she's making um she's making a load of mugs for my retreats in Ballyglass House in Tipperary and uh, they're going to be in October on the uh, on the 19th and the 26th of October they're both Saturdays so if you want to come down there's going to be amazing makers I've booked out we've got 19 makers coming down so nine on each day and there's demonstrations of lots of different things as well on the day um we might there's uh, Limerick Lace have sent me um, 10 kits for people who are interested in trying Limerick Lace. Um, we've got a punch needle expert coming down and we have a weaver, a tapestry weaver as well, who might be coming down just to give us a little go. So um, that's really exciting and I will be releasing more info coming up. Mm. I have to be honest you guys, these last couple of weeks have been really intense. Um, I've been, I've, I've just taken on a new job in work and it's very intense. I'm kind of still doing my old work alongside the new work. So it's a lot and I'm trying to carve out time and make my, and organize my own time, which is very different to what I'm normally doing. So I've been under quite a lot of pressure there. Um, then I also have a couple of really interesting projects in the works, which um, I'm, I, I was absolutely astounded at being chosen by Sweet Georgia to be their one of their 10 ambassadors that they have all around the world. Um, I'm really honored to be one of, be chosen, but it is a little bit like, oh God, what does that mean? Oh, but I'm just, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm getting really involved in the Sweet Georgia School, Sweet Georgia, in the forums on there. Um, I'm, I'm loving the classes that I'm taking part in, and I got my rose, my, my kind of introductory package from them. Do you want to see? It's stunning, stunning. So I have a few things I want to talk about. I've got one finished weaving project. I've got um, my next weaving project, which is almost ready to go on the loom. I just need to do my calculations and figure out what I'm actually going to be doing. Um, uh, but I have half the yarn all wound up, ready to go. But <clears throat> this is going to be a project on the loom as well. This is turning into a completely weaving podcast. Oh well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> but um yeah so sweet george just sent me they asked me what i would like to um to get as part of my ambassadorship package so i got i chose this stunning skein of tough love sock in one of the new winter colorways this is called evening and it's a winter to the oh my god it looks amazing on there oh, it's absolutely amazing so Tough Love Sock is a 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 425 yards, 388 meters. Um, and the, so this is, oh, so squishy. So this was going to be the warp for my loom. And then what I was going to do is I, actually, I asked for one skein of Tough Love Sock. It's so shiny in the evening colorway I said that I said that already and then two braids of their stunning main colorways that they have so this one is called tea party and it is oh my god so beautiful this is Polworth and silk and I want to spin these up I don't know how I'm going to spin them up I think I'm just going to randomly spin them and then um 
and then weave them with the tough love sock I don't know how I don't know how I'm gonna manage it but I don't care <laughs> I've got one of these tea party um, bumps or uh, braids <clears throat> and then this is possibly my favorite actually they're all really good though this is called grouse and this is a Polworth and silk base as well and it is beautiful I love the tight little braid that she does that's really nice so this is gross this is 85% pole work 15% tuss of silk 100 grams of spinning fiber and um, this these are sweet Georgia yarns hand dyed in Canada oh my goodness oh oh no this one's falling apart And then if you put it together with this, right, you know, right, right, right. Are we seeing it? Are we seeing it? It's pretty. Do you know what I might end up doing is actually having these as the warp and this as the weft because a dark weft is beautiful and shows off a warp a little bit nicer. You don't want to be hiding anything, any of these. I think that would be really nice, actually. Oh, oh my God. I might need to. We'll see. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. So yeah, so that's my plan for these. A beautiful scarf. I might try and do some kind of fancy lace weaving with these, like with Brooks bouquet and different types of of weaving. I think this is knit got a new book in or is getting a new book in called um, The Weaver's Book of Yarn Ideas or The Little Book of Weaver's Ideas. I think it's an interweave book. Um, so I might get that and see what type of um, different types of lace and texture that I can do on the loom with these. I think that would be really nice. Hmm. I, do you know, I really want to take the Sweet Georgia, uh, the weaving class that I'm, she has a rigid head loom class, which I think is up. She's currently working on the four shaft, which is like the grown ups loom, which I haven't got to yet, but I will get there. So these are in my little bag, my little basket from Sostrina Green. And it's just a little bag of just color. I had to get that pink. I had to get that pink somewhere in a Sweet Georgia package because that is signature Sweet Georgia. Ah, so good. I just want to add in here that <clears throat> I've been given an affiliate link for both of the School of Sweet Georgia and for the Sweet Georgia shop as well. So um, what that means is if you'd like to buy any of the products that I've just shown you there, that you can go down and just click on the link just down below in my um, description and that will take you through to the shop or it'll take you through to the school. And what that does is that I get a little bit of uh, money towards the podcast. And um, yeah, so if you'd like to support me through buying something that you were wanting to buy anyway, because you saw it and it was really pretty and oh my God, they're really pretty. Um, that'd be, I'd really appreciate that. And thank you very much. And uh, yeah, so that is one of my projects and I was really excited to get that. But, um, and then I've got a couple of other people who've been in contact with me. Um, and there's a, there's a huge amount of opportunities that are coming my way and I'm just feeling it's super imposter syndrome -y at the moment, which is, is fine, it's expected to be honest, I think. But um, it's really exciting to see these things happen and, but sometimes I just get the fear <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't, I don't know. I'm just gonna close the laptop and not answer that email. I don't know how to do it. So sometimes I apologize if anyone is contacting me and I am being a little bit slow. I will get back to it. Sometimes I need a secondary email to remind me to do it. Because so I put up an Instagram story being like, what do I talk about on my hundredth episode? I don't know. And someone was like, how do you balance family and life and work and crafts? And I'm like, I don't. I uh, don't, and I don't, there's no balance whatsoever. And then someone was like, hey, did you know that that's called being a Gemini? I'm like, mm, that's what that is. 
and people are like, oh, you know, you should start, you should have a routine, get up the same time every day, <laughs> write in a journal. <laughs> That's not how Gemini's roll. We don't do routine. I don't do routine. I don't know how to do routine. I try. Last two days. That's it. One day, maybe. I just don't. I just don't have it. I don't have it in me. It's not part of my makeup, which is fine because I work different ways, you know. And I just kind of constantly run on adrenaline and fear and will die of a heart attack. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I have another wonderful prize to offer you. I just remembered. Um, so, a Jennifer Shields Tolland, JST Knitwear, contacted me and she is just releasing her, um, it's kind of a, a knit along. So it's a shawl, it's called the Bubbly Brioche Shawl. You can see it just here. And it is being released in, I think it's sections of five. So it's five every, uh, so it's over five weeks. You can like get a section and just knit that. So you can focus on just like a small section at a time. And then you can, um, at the end, everyone has knitted along together on the JST Knitwear um, Ravelry group. And uh, you get a lovely shawl at the end of it, which is so exciting. So thank you so much for that, Jennifer. It's so nice of you to um, send that on to some of my some of my viewers so that'll be part of the price package as well just down below and um yeah so if you want to take part absolutely you can hop over and um, buy it now i can't remember exactly when it goes live but um you'll be able to see there's a link down below in the in the show notes um and this starflake shawl has started it's no, it's not started yet. Starting in October. That's the Stephen West knit along, the mystery knit along. And it it needs two, it needs four skeins, two colors. Um, it's a two, it's, I think it's fingering weight. And I'm like, oh, I could do something like that. You know? But like, this is a sport weight. This is a sport weight kind of sweater quantity, which I was going to make up the timely cardigan in, but I don't know if I have enough for the timely. But maybe I could do a star flake in sport weight. I don't know. This is townhouse yarns. In this is micromanage and this is cloak, cloak, cloak. Yes, micromanage and cloak. Stunning colours. I'd love a Stephen West mystery shawl in this. I think there's a lot of brioche though. Well, I'm assuming there's a lot of brioche. I shouldn't really be assuming anything, but here I am. Assuming. So I do have quite a lot of like two skeins of the same colour, but like I could mix it with other stuff. I don't know. We'll see. I've got enough going on though, so maybe not. So speaking about weaving, I'm going to show you my finished project. So you might have seen, if you're a subscriber, you might have seen the video of the how to video that I put up when I was making this beautiful piece of fabric. This is my houndstooth pattern. My, it's, it's just a houndstooth pattern. And it was actually, I'm so glad that this is finally like, it's a folded, look how you can fold it. It's fabric. Look at that edge. Oh. Is that the good edge? Yeah, that's the good edge. This is the other edge. Ah, they're both good now. Let's be honest, they're both good. I'll show you. So um, I was not switching colors. I was not switching colors on this edge. This is just the normal edge. Oh, that's so satisfying. This is the cut, this is the edge I was switching colors on, which is fine. It's actually really quite pretty. Can you see that? So there's a method that I use when I switch my colors when I'm doing um, hound's tooth, and it makes for a really nice little, a little. It's almost like you know when you slip a slip stitches up the side of a garment. Mm -hmm. There's a little wobble there, but you'll pro you'll all probably say, "Oh no, there isn't." And you know what? You're right. There isn't. It's fine. So this is my hound's tooth pattern it's absolutely gorgeous looks really fancy james wants it because it's the tottenham colors the spurs colors so but it's glittery <laughs> so i'm like are you sure he's like yes i was like okay so it is glittery if you can see it there um <laughs> i knit it out of lobby or i wove it out of the the deep navy is lobelia in the isis fiber arts colorway or 
Isis Fiber Arts in the Lobelia colorway. And then the gray is silver and this Cash Lux Spark. They're both, I think, a bit of a cashmere in there. I think so, anyway. I've, I've lost the skate. I've lost the, um, I've lost the, oh, what's the word? I've lost the band from the Isis Fiber Arts one. Sorry, Michelle. I lost it. I don't know where it is but they're both Canadian dyers I love them and I both and I bought them both in the space of about two weeks and I had cast on the I'd cast on the navy for a mar a fairy little pattern but I pulled it out because the tension my tension was too tight and I needed to loosen up my tension and then I never cast it on again so it just sat in a ball for two years and I was like I'm gonna use this so I decided to pull it together and it was because of the Sweet Georgia ambassadorship that I finally was like I've got to use that one Sweet Georgia skein that I've been like holding on to because it's so precious you know it's like oh it's like so gorgeous but now I knew that I was getting some more Sweet Georgia I was like I can so and I'm so glad I did it's absolutely beautiful so I've been looking at those you know those um those scarf tying videos like 50,000 ways you can tie a scarf and there's one I really like actually it's so you get it the either end I need to finish off the edges they're not great but you get it either end and you put one side through and then you kind of put your hand through twist it and put the other one through and it kind of forms a little a little diamond. It's kind of sweet. I like it a lot. It's really sweet. So this is now James's football scarf, which is fine. <laughs> what I could do though is make a t-shirt. I have bought some yarns to make I bought some some extra fabric to make this type of t-shirt which suits great you know what I mean so you just basically need a panel down the front and that's your fabric that you've woven you know so that would be the panel down the front there and it just shows you how to alternate a t-shirt pattern I might I might use the Agnes top because I've got that the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top and maybe I don't know do something with that um, so that's maybe an idea that I might use it for as well. We'll see. We'll see how I can get away with if I can get away with it. In the end, it came to two meters, uh, two meters and eight centimeters. So 208 centimeters. And that was around, that was a good estimate. I had estimated that it was two and a half, like that's that's from woven edge to woven edge and then the rest of it is all the rest of the warp so it was two and a half complete warp so I lost uh, about uh, 40 centimeters just on yarn wastage and shrinkage which is to be uh, I don't think it was four, I don't think it was 40 centimeters I don't know how many is that that might have been that's okay and I still have some yarn left. The thing is that you you can't really knit till the end with uh, with the weaving. You have to kind of calculate it out a bit first and you have to have a contingency plan if you run out. I, um, I had thought, I had weighed out that I had more, um, I had more silver than I did uh, the navy. So I started off with a little bit of a a silver band and then I forgot how many I had done so yeah they're a little off they're a little off but uh that's fine I don't really care I could have counted I had a feeling it was 10 and that was right and I was like can't be 10 that looks too small and then I did like 20 I, it doesn't matter it's fine it's handmade it needs to be a little bit special so now that is my houndstooth scarf See, I feel like if it's just around your neck, you need you can't you don't get the full benefit. So I'm gonna go 1940s. See, so pretty. Oh my god, it's so nice. It's it's very kind of it is very 1950s, isn't it? It's quite a classic design, a very classic design, and it's so simple it's a simple tabby weave or 
just a plain weave that's all it is there's nothing fancy in it I mean it did take me 17 minutes to explain how <laughs> I was filming it as I was making it so I did a couple of time lapses and then I was a bit wordy and then it was like 40 minutes and I, I got it down to 17 so that was a lot of blabbering about nonsense you didn't know to need to know about so um yeah there was chocolate down there so eating it so the next thing I'm working on weaving wise next thing that's going onto my loom as in I've weaved I've wound it up I got a very special package <laughs> huge package so um, a couple of weeks ago I got a message from the uh, just on Instagram um, from this company called Mwesart and they said that they'd be really interested in working with me um, they've been watching my podcast and they love it and they'd like to send me a free sample of their their yarn and you can go online anyone can do this and you can order a sample and it's only a t it's a tiny little bit it's n like tiny tiny little thing and it just gives you some details it's, I can't I, I actually lost it when it first arrived I lost it that's how small it was so um, I ordered it and then I just started following their Instagram I started following their story and they they have a good marketing team. <laughs> I love stories. I love the story of where stuff comes from. I love who the people are behind it, who made my clothes, who's making the actual items. I love traceability. And Moisart has that in spades. They explain all about so what do they produce? They produce Eri silk or peace silk and it comes from the Eri moth and it is a type of silk that they, most silk, um, I spoke about this before, most silk um, that people use, uh, they don't wait until the moth comes out, until the moth kind of is born. They boil the moth inside in the cocoon so that the moth doesn't eat its way through um the silk and you get these really long strands of fibers then and then they they eat the moth the the little grub or whatever they they eat they eat it um, it's a really good source of protein um and then but it was just a bit like hmm, i don't know i don't really i don't know I, I was, you know uh, yeah. i don't know i just felt a bit iffy about it so, uh, and that's just my own feelings. You don't need to try and convince me. It's okay. I don't need a devil's advocate either. Thanks. So, um, yeah, so this, com this company, they work with the Airy Silk Farmers. And so what Airy Silk is, is they leave the moth um, grow. They leave the moth eat its, eat, its, eat its way out and then it flaps about. It's huge, these things. Massive. And um, you can see the whole process. And it's fascinating. It's really, really interesting. Um, and it's just, it's really lovely. I love the idea of it. I love the, the story behind it. And uh, they work, they've been working this way for generations, for hundreds of years. And they're based in Megali Megalaya. I'm pronouncing that wrong, I apologise. Um, in northeast India and they work with local airy silk farmers and local women who spin using a traditional talki or spindle and then they uh, have local weavers as well who um, weave up cloth which you can buy to make whatever you want so if you're not a weaver if you're not into spinning if you're not into knitting you can actually buy the fabric and you, you can just use it as as is ha, all it's all like some of it is um mill spun and some of it is hand woven or ha, hand spun so they've got a really interesting setup going on so i had to go ahead and order a whole bunch because it's so easy to use the website too easy to use the website there's um there's you can buy that you can get a little sample a free sample you can buy the yarn individually and it all naturally dyed as well which is very important for some people have i got a little sample there i don't know if i have that that sample yeah. it go to somewhere i think 
anyway so um i got two skeins of fingering weight 100 percent airy silk and this is mill spun it's a four ply now oh, it's it's very cool but it doesn't feel like as you know it's not like a soft as like a mercerized or a commercial silk it's it's not rough it has a little bit of a cottony feel um, it's cool it has that beautiful drape and oh, oh it's so lovely so my plan is right I'm going to use this commercial spun as a warp a really long warp to make clothing. A really long warp. And then I've got two skeins of hand spun. Now this is the hand spun, this is Moise Art now. This is the hand spun. It's kind of a, a, a lace weight, fingering weight variation. There is, <clears throat> it is 100% airy silk. It says 90 grams, 1,150 yards approximately. That's a lot. It's, they're actually 100 grams. I've weighed them. So they're 100 grams. Well, this, these, this one that I've got is 100 grams and it's 11,150 yards. Lots around 11,000 meters, maybe 900 meters. So if I was to double this up, I would get like a really light fingering, but at the moment it's a lace. Yeah, it's a lace weight. So I I wound up one of these and it, because it's hand spun and it's a single hands, it's a hand spun single. Um, it just split, but that's fine because I'm weaving, so it's grand. So I'm, this is going to be my weft the way. What I'm going to be doing as well is mixing in this weft with another set of hand spun yarn that I got from northern India as well. Same type of region. Um, I got some hand spun cotton which I'm going to be weaving. I might be weaving two or three of these strands in one go, maybe four all together just to bring it up a little bit. So this is hand spun cotton and you can see there's still like little bits of vegetable matter and stuff in there. Now I've had these almost a year and I've not done anything with them. It's just because they've been so fine. This is cobweb weight. I think it's thinner. It's definitely thinner than the, um, than the silk. And I also want to weave um, some of the hand spun nettle fibre that I got from the same group of women in... Um, now, this company is slightly different in that they don't have as good of an online presence. So it's harder to track who they are, where they're from, what's happening. And it's literally just because they don't have a, a marketing manager, I don't think. Or if they do, I think I'm, I was just dealing with one woman. Um, and I think on Instagram, they're him and Lee and Nettle Fibre and they do a lot of selling fabric or they put up a lot of fabric but I think they need to maybe work a little bit more on um maybe even work with Wizard to kind of combine and because they're completely different products it would be really interesting to combine the two of them because it's the same idea that they want to go for they want to open out these beautiful hand spun traditional silks and fabrics to the western market so Anyway, so um, yeah, so I'm going to be working on white, silvery, kind of, this, this is the silk, this is the cotton, sorry, and then this is the nettle. So it's going to be cream, it's going to be a lot of texture, I'm really interested, I'm really excited. So yay! That is my next project. I might be doing some window pane or something, maybe pick up sticks of fabric, I don't know. And I, what else did I get in this massive packet? Well, I got a kilo of Airy Silk Sliver, which is the raw, the packaging is so beautiful as well, I'm wizard. So it's the, it's the combed top 
and it's kind of flying away here now but it's beautiful so they're quite short fibers so I've been blending them in with um, with wool to make Rolex and I think the best thing that I can do with this is actually spin it on my charka, which I got. If anyone remembers, I have a book charka, which is a traditional Indian spinning tool, um, which it can fold up and it looks like a book. And um, yeah, so I think I might be using that because the fibers are so short because the silk has been cut basically by the worm, by the, the moth, which has eaten its way out. So, and it's all, I've also got, Oh yeah, Airy Silk Cocoon Cakes. So that top has been put through a mill basically and maybe the fibres have been shortened a little bit, I'm not sure. But these are actual, the cocoons themselves which have been washed and degummed and you can actually pull them apart and you can spin straight from them. So these are kind of the longest fibres that you'd get. So you can either spin from the side or from the center. And kind of, the gum is actually still in it. You can kind of see it dissing off. So, so yeah, so you can kind of start twisting from the center there. It's incredibly strong. So that's one way to spin from it. Is that fascinating? Oh, so I've got a whole, what did I get? 200 grams of this stuff. Ah, so I, so I just love trying loads of different types of things. So yeah, pretty good. Now I'm gonna go and get the um, sample. They sent me on a little sample card of all their natural dyes. I'm gonna show you that now. I found a tiny kitten on my journeys. Except she's not tiny anymore, she's huge. Do you remember when she fell asleep in my hand? My hand, one hand? Look, one hand doesn't even hold her face now. She's so huge and she's so wriggly. There's no flooping in this one. Look at that leg, oh my God. Dancing kittens. Oh, okay. You need to let go of that now. You need to. Bye. Bye, kitten. You done? You done? I think she's done. So this is a little set. <laughs> so she sent me on these little samples. So these are the dye colors that they've come up with, which is so nice to see them in person, actually, because they had a load on their website as well. Some of these colors were sold out. So this is um, the purple ash. This is blended lac and turmeric. What's this one? Monarch orange, as in like the monarch butterfly. Uh, charcoal, charcoal gray. And then there's a sterling gray, which is kind of more of a greeny. And then there's this kind of purple ash color. Hang on, is there two purple ashes on there? There's two purple ashes on there. There's azalea pink, oh, cute. Uh, maroon, cherry malt, this is cherry malt. This one is fern green. Love that green. That is a bit lighter. This is jungle vine green. Then there's olive green and then there's sun glow yellow. So these are all naturally dyed colours from India. Oh, love it. Hi Toasty, you want to get in the box now? Oh, she's all in for it now. So she also sent me, they've started doing hand spinning, but in thicker weights to kind of appeal to the Western market because I think they've been spinning so fine. I think that was the problem I had with the cotton that I had. It was so fine. I just didn't know what to do with it. You know, it's, it's almost made for, it's either made for weaving, really like maybe backstrap weaving, backstrap loom weaving or um, machine knitting maybe mostly weaving I'd say. So they have started to produce fingering weight singles um, in, in thicker color, in thicker yarn weights. So this is a fingering weight. So I'd say it measures out, but it's kind of, it looks to me a little bit closer to DK. 
Can you see that? Oh, it's so, 100% so, 100% so. <gasps> and then this one is a worsted weight, I think. No, this one says it's a DK. So maybe this is a DK. This one says it's a DK and this one is a fingering weight. So there's a slight bit of difference in that. They're a bit thinner. This is the light, the lighter one. So they are starting to do, um, and they're all hand spun. So if you want to get any of these bad boys and put them in for the spin and make along, totes counts. I mean, that's all I'm saying. And you're supporting women living in villages and doing the craft that they've done all their lives. Hashtag just saying. So I got this lovely little, little letter then from uh, Miranda. Hi Grace, thanks for choosing our Airy Silk Peace Yarn. Your purchase helps us flourish together with fun, talented sp uh, women spinners who spin your yarn. Come visit us to experience the story. You can go there. They've set up, they're setting up these kind of tours. Um, they can be a couple of days long, they can be a week long, and the whole thing is organised once you arrive into the local airport. They pick you up, they drive you around, you can stay in different um, standards of accommodation. You can stay in like a hotel, or you can do a homestay with families, or you can do like glamping in tents. And uh, you can see how the farmers farm the airy silk. You can see the spinners, how they spin it. You can see weaving. You can see natural dyeing. And um, I'm definitely going. Hashtag just saying. I'm definitely going. I need to... I need to plan. I need to do time. I need to work out my timing and stuff. It's, it won't be this year. But hopefully next year maybe after the wedding maybe 2021 but it's definitely in my plan to head over there because I just I'm sold give me a good story tell me who you are tell me tell me who I'm buying from and how they work and I am done you know I need to learn a bit of the language I think before I go over but all the teams speak English so um, they're really easy to work with and uh, the tours are all English spoken, English led. So that's really handy. So that's my massive parcel that I got, actually my two massive parcels that I got. So that's part of that. How exciting. Yay. I'm gonna warp those up now once I've filmed this podcast. So I just wanna talk a little bit about um, my knitting that I've been doing. I haven't been doing much because I've been really busy in work. I haven't actually had a time to do a thing, but I wanted to just show you the progress that I've been making on this, my design. I ran out of yarn. So I'm waiting for yarn to come from John Arbin. <laughs> I underestimated. Shocking. But um, this is how far I've got. I've started on the flowers down here. So technically I could keep going because I, I have enough white, but I don't have enough of the green. I think I've just, yeah, I just ran out of this green. This is the last bit I had left. So you'll need, instead of 25 grams, you'll need 50 grams of that green and you might need another 25 grams of the lighter green as well, which is, you know, that's part of designing. <laughs> realizing that you you need more than you thought you did so but I am really enjoying this and I really want to get the yarn again so I can crack on so I definitely still am on track ish to finish the yoke by October fingers crossed and thank you so much to everybody who has offered to be a test knitter um thanks I'm working on it <laughs> do you know what I might do while I'm waiting is actually start on the maroon color. I have another set uh, which I want to try out in a smaller size. So these colors. So I do want to try to make uh, the same sort of the same pattern in a smaller size with these colors, which I think would be really nice. I think that'd be so pretty. Love this color. Love it. What are you doing? She's found a pen. She loves pens. Obsessed with pens, Miss Toast. So um, yeah, I might do that. I've also, I've not gotten very far on my So Faded. I use that for uh, 
knit night. Didn't get very far. This is my hand spun spin uh, spin and make along project, Smile 2019 project. Didn't get very far on that. But I really actually really want to pick up that. And I have been spinning just the same on a few Rolags, the, the blue Rolags that I did, but it's on my spinning wheel at the moment, so I'm not gonna pick that up. I have been making a ton of Rolags for Mars. Hey Brownberry is doing some spindling classes for excuse me, <laughs> for Vogue Knitting Live. Um, so she's doing a couple of classes and she's doing a class down in Florida with um, Stephen West. And I think there's a couple of other people down there. So um, I'm just waiting on a pack, a, a, how, like how I'm going to pack them up. That's in the post. And uh, then they're, they're going to be shipped down. So I've just been making a ton of Rolex, which is so much fun. So, um, yeah, I might be, that's also really exciting as well. I made, I'm made. i making them on my handmade blending board, which is when I just, I bought the 30 by 30 centimeter blend carding cloth off of Wing and Woolworks. And then I got a chopping board, which was like 40 by 40 or 35 by 35. And um, I just stapled it down on it. Got two big knitting needles, done, job done, blending board. I think the whole thing, because the blending cloth was quite expensive, it was about £43, but the blending board itself was £120. And then including shipping, it would be another tenner, because it's heavy. So I I think in all, the board, the chopping board cost me about 20 maybe 11 Actually, no, it was only €11. Euros. And then uh, the stapler and the staple gun, because I didn't have one, cost another tenner. And then I had... Or someone gave me big thick knitting needles but they're not too expensive either they're just pony knitting needles thank you so much actually who was that lisa it was lisa wasn't it lisa it was you yes thank you so much for that um so in all i think the total cost came to about 70 euros which is about 50 euros cheaper than uh than buying it so you know that's cheaper still it's still 70 euros so you know but hey ho it's so much fun so much fun to make the board and it's so much fun to film them i love the blending films so exciting and if you're interested in in watching more blending board kind of videos and getting more rolags paradise fibers is your is it's your first stop number one stop do that all right baby what are you doing under there <laughs> She's looking at me. She's trying to eat the rubbish. I should stop her. I'm not gonna. So listen, thank you so much for joining me for my hundredth episode. If you've been here for all of all hundred episodes, you, you... thank you. That's mad. I don't believe you. <laughs> but if you are a new viewer and you, this is your first one, welcome. Thank you so much for taking a chance. Um, you can still absolutely take part in the giveaway. Everyone can take part in the giveaway, but you do have to be subscribed and then um, watch next week's podcast to find out if you've won. And um, yeah, so we'll see how we go. If you want to throw me a thumbs up, thanks. I'd appreciate that. And yeah, now have a chat down in the DMs. Not the DMs, the comments. Um, I won't be commenting on all the all the comments underneath just because it'll throw off my comment calculator like it'll throw off my the random number generator but um, yeah so if you want to chat to me about anything specific if you want to uh, ask specific questions I'll hope I'll answer them next week in next week's podcast deal okay listen thank you so much everybody and uh, good luck bye